for the future of this place. At first glance, as you leave the port area, Samso looks like a dozen or so villages in a scattered community of fundamentally conservative farmers, which is exactly what it is. But as you look closer, you start to see telltale signs that something else is going on here. Something very different from their quaint out of the way lifestyle. We've been living here for 26 years. Eric Anderson is a long time Sam singer, as the locals call themselves. And just like about every one of the island's 4,000 odd residents, Eric's well and truly caught up in Sam So's renewable revolution. So they're really handsome cattle, aren't they? Sure. On the face of it, Affable Eric, a man of the Sam so soil, isn't exactly what you'd call a natural greenie. But his gut has always pointed him in an environmentally friendly direction. So now, thanks to the island's self-imposed green technology, these days, Eric uses zero fossil fuels, he says, in both his daily life and his farm work. I mean, yours is a very deceptive farm because it yeah. It looks just like a, a beautiful Danish rural yeah. Yeah, it's a, scene. Yeah, it's a little farm in. Except, yeah. <laughs> except when you get here. And what's that? That's a solar panels, water-based for heating the house. Right. And the little ones is solar panels, and they, they are making electricity. Uh huh. And um, they are placed here because it's. Uh, uh, towards south and then hit the sun the right. whole day. Right. So yeah. you're totally self-sufficient energy-wise? Do you have, get all the power and energy that you need? Almost. I have a few shares in the windmills. Oh, in, in, in some of the turbines? Yeah, wind turbines. Yeah. And, and a, lot of, a lot of people on the island now have got shares in that as well. Yeah, sure. So it's not just, uh, if you like, saving the planet, it's also saving some money and making some money. I'm not making much money on this, it's, uh, it's more idealism, I think. Yeah, really? Tell me, tell me what your idealism is. Yeah, to uh, uh, not to, to burn the oil off and then and, uh, yeah. spoil the environment. But are you, you experimenting with other things, other things on the farm where you think that you can reduce the, the emissions? Yeah, I, uh, uh, my car and my tractor is running on uh, rapeseed oil. Rapeseed Canola, oil. Canola, yeah. whatever you call it. Canola, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and then how, where is it processed, the, the rapeseed, to get you the oil that you need for the car? Yeah, in the barn. Do you do it yourself? Yeah. Right. Can we have a look at it? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, this, is, this, is, this is your rapeseed yeah, plan. Yeah. But from those seeds, they look dry, you're able to get enough oil, you're able to extract enough oil from those seeds, rape seeds, yeah. to, to, to run your car. Sure. And the and, and, well, and off this very, very simple looking piece of engineering. The seed out into this one and the oil comes out of this, there's little Can oil. you turn it on for us? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. And what about this? What happens with this? I feed it for the cows. Aha, aha. It's, uh, so this is this is reusable. Yeah, it's valuable. It's um, great uh, protein content. Right. right. And the oil is where the actual. It's put down here into these boxes. Yep. Right. Oh. Drive you're running it. You're tracking that stuff. It's doing no harm to oh. the environment. Just to know that. CO2 is picked up by the rate uh, plant again. Right. Really, does it? But it, it, it actually. Recycling. Eric typifies that something different that's clearly going on here. In many ways, this place is out of whack with itself. On the one hand, it's remote, old world beauty and timeless simplicity, like this fishing village, Ballon. On the other hand, a short stroll away on its outskirts is this unlikely establishment, the Samso Energy Academy. The driving force of this was not to tell people we would cut down the CO2, uh, but talk about your, the, the daily cost, the household economy and, and the pragmatic attitude to how so in many ways it was like pragmatism it. rather than idealism that result, was a I'd say driving so. force. I'd say so. If there was a driving force behind um. the island's attack on its own carbon emissions in recent years, it was this guy, Soren Hermansen. 
Ja, vi tror vi er færdige, men skal vi... Soren's the director of the academy. He got involved 12 years ago, when Samso entered a competition to create Denmark's greenest, most renewable community. And it won. And that's when things began to change. You should think local and act local. Yeah. And forget about the global. <laughs> because, I mean, we, we live in a, in, a, in a world of communication. If somebody living in a, a, an apartment building is doing something significant, that will be spread all over the world in no time. So instead, of time. instead of thinking globally, think lots of locally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once they got a guaranteed price for electricity, the wind turbines became viable, but they still don't come cheap. I think you have to got to remember that, I mean, we have had wind, windmills here for 300 years. Mm. They were there because of a practical reason. They were not there to stir the environment or to kill some birds or whatever. I mean, they were there for, because we needed them. And today, we, I, as a, as a promoter of this, I use the same argument saying that, why should we have the wind turbines? Because we need them. Mm. We need them to produce cheaper energy and cleaner energy for us and to stop the imported cost of fossil fuel. But the Sorin-driven revolution to make Samso CO2 neutral didn't stop with the mighty wind turbines. It spread. And now includes all sorts of things renewable in its anti-carbon armory. Like this biomass heating plant for the district, one of many that have sprung up using the co-op model. You've got very conservative rural people like Eric Anderson, who we talked to yesterday, right, to turn around turn around, get rid of all their old habits. How did you do it? You have to remember that we are, the, the farming community is, a, is, is, is an old co-op unity. They, they have this corpor corporation in them and they have made co-op dairy factories, co-op slaughterhouses, co-op uh, farm. So products. they're used to working together. Yeah, they, they have to. We, we think we're leaders of our own life. I think we have this independent thinking, but we also know we're part of a system. So we work in, in you could say, in cooperation with the system. And then, in a very pragmatic way, we see what's in it for me, kind of. Uh, this climate here on the island is a little bit better because we have the sea all the way around. Mo and Marla, a Christmas tree grower and seller, is one Sam Singer who's privately making a decent kroner as a carbon busting convert. As well as his clever Chrissy tree operation, in summer, Moen grows strawberries and blackberries, two very seasonal crops. But now he can make money all year round from this, a massive tower with revolving blades. August 2010, then it's uh, 10 years old. Uh, so, uh, and it, it has been a good investment. From eight, I saw the base of the wind turbine takes up only a few square metres of his land. A sea breeze comes in, the turbine turns, and you make money. A return literally blown in the wind. In, the, in the farming, there you have to uh, make something yourself. You have to be there. You have to be, if you have to make money on farming, you have to be a good farmer. Right. But this does it itself. Of course, I have to be good having the right service on it, making the right contracts with selling the energy. Has it all come about because of, of the fact that Samso is, is the energy island? It, it, it's now, all part of that whole wonderful scheme, isn't it? We have sometimes have a dream about here on Samsø and maybe we can uh, we can live that dream out yeah. that we could sell our energy to some companies who want to buy really green energy so that we could get of course a little bit more money for it but then we should make a 
deal with these companies so that this extra money we get, we use them again to make green energy. So it drives around, you know, like in a circle. That we don't yeah. just put them in and buy red wine for them. <laughs> <laughs> that we'll then use them again to, to make new energy things. So, so it does look like your dream's coming true. Though. Yeah, in, in a way it does. On, and I can also say it's, it's one of the best investments. So do you see yourself as, a, as an environmentalist or a, or a farmer or a businessman? Part of everything. All three. Yeah. All three. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to be here and share this yeah. with you. It really is. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This carbon reduction idealism stuff is all very well, but what about all those cars driving around Samso's country roads and villages, including the one yours truly has been getting about in? Aren't they running on nasty carbon belching petrol? They certainly are. But the Samsingers insist their emissions are more than offset by a massive wind farm just off the island's coast. Now, the wind turbines are obviously offshore and onshore, obviously vital to the whole exercise. Yeah, they, they are right, vital. They are the biggest producers, and they are the, I mean, that, that, that is the number one technology in supporting renewable energy to the, to the system. We are harvesting the wind, and then we're producing green electricity, and we feed it into the national system. So the you whole... do have, what, about 40% more than you need? Oh yeah, more than that. I think more. we have maybe 60-70% more than we need. This is Samso, the energy island in one shot. Two worlds, not colliding, but actually working together. And here to see it happen are these guys. They're from China. It's fair to say that tiny Samso, with its big ideas, has caught not just ours, but the world's attention. Every year, they tell us, hundreds of climate change policy makers and activists visit this so-called Isle of Plenty. So, so you use the pipes to transfer this uh, power to different uh, areas yes, of you the have, island? Yes, you have this, this plan. It's actually quite simple. You have this, uh, the solar panels and they produce heat. In the global scheme of things, of course, Samso's carbon footprint is insignificant. Its 4,000 plus rabid energy renewers are far too few to save the planet. But there's definitely heaps of carbon reduction tricks to be learned from Samso's amazing 10-year turnaround. 